property which is better, uh, which uh, which is be which 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 which, uh, which doesn't this uh, has this good property which has this but doesn't have this. This uh, uh, this space is a normal space. So it's uh, it's really it's really it turns out that. This guy depends in somehow only on on the difference. This very specific property, which uh, is a kind of norm associated to, which uh, it's not true for this. Also, Bershik discovered some extremal properties for W1. Oh, okay, well, okay, from some abstract viewpoint, it may be m more interesting and uh, 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 in some sense better, but as a matter of fact, this is much more uh, application. So. And the, the transportation, tra transportation making sure is, is really bad. So it's very singular. Okay, but okay. So I, I, it, I guess it's time to say what the transportation is. The, the transportation mapping is. Uh, uh, well, the most important fact that uh, there exists a convex function. Phi, <coughs> such that the solution to the Monch Kantarovich problem uh, is concentrated is concentrated uh, say, so this subset of R2 uh, Rn times Rn, and the measure of this guy uh, equals to one. So this, 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 uh, the, the, the graph of the mapping, the graph of this mapping, x goes to the gradient of x, uh, has full measure. In particular, in particular. Uh, uh, the measure nu is the push forward measure of the gradient. So it's clear what I mean. And, uh, so you just have the gradient from Rn to Rn. And we have here, here, here uh, the measure nu and here the measure nu. And this is the image of, of mu under this. Uh, okay, this is the most the most interesting thing about this Kantarovich uh, theory. Uh, so it means, in fact, that your solution phi is really concentrated on some uh, small set of dimension n. Yes, yes, what context? Yes, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, yes, it's linear, which happens rarely, but... <coughs> okay, what was the proof of this? Uh, so one, one approach is somehow... Um, it's a kind of elementary approach. It relies on the notion of cyclical monotonicity. Cyclical monotonicity. Uh, okay. Uh, take a solution. Take a solution to the Monch Kantarovich problem, and you easily understand that the following fact is true. So, uh, imagine that you restrict your your measure onto some set. And you consider it like uh, just uh, a separate measure, 
And you can see the projection of this, the projection of this restriction. Then it should be optimal for its projection and for the same cost. Uh, because if it's not optimal, you can take this piece and replace it by the optimal piece. Sorry? Uh, no, well, not necessary. Uh, so you mean uh, it's uh, it, it, okay? It's you want to take the the, 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 the box? Okay, uh, not necessary. Well, uh, it's, it's any set. Well, this, this is a very simple uh, simple thing. So this should be should be optimal. Otherwise, you replace by 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 another. One. And if you think about it a little bit, then you understand uh, something about convex sub, uh, uh, about discrete uh, finite sub subsets of the uh, of the support of phi. So let us consider. Uh, okay, let, let, let let us take the support of phi, topological support, and uh, collect some finite number uh, of points. Since it's support, since it's uh, they belong to support, means that every every small every ball around this point has a non-zero measure, non-zero pi measure. And do the following: put just the uniform measure on it. Uh, Then it should be optimal again for its projection. Uh, okay, pick the final fi final number point in the support. Put uniform measure on it. It's just discrete object, and it should be optimal for its projection. It's not directly followed from this because this A can have zero measure, and usually it has. But you can modify a little bit argument, uh, replacing uh, the point by a small ball, and you will uh, you will get this conclusion. Okay. But what to, what 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 means to be optimal uh, for 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 discrete space? In the discrete space, you have just more or less a final number of. Uh, uh, variance. Uh, so you, you can uh, uh, find, a, find a number of candidates to be optimal, and you can just compare the best the best uh, the best choice to with 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 with, with others. So I mean that okay now you have some collection of this of these points. And optimality means that uh, uh, this guy should be always better than uh, the similar cost for, for the concurrent. So, uh, for instance, uh, instead of this optimal uh, optimal measure, you can take the measure which is uniform distributed on x, y, x, i, uh, y, sigma, i, where i is some uh, finite permutation. So, uh, okay, again, so if you have collection of points, you fix uh, axis and you permute in some way the, 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 uh, the second coordinate. So you will get some some some, some other measure, and, this, and since this is optimal, this will always be worse than than this. This means that this inequality should hold. And this property is called cyclical monotonicity. Uh, uh, 
since since every permutation uh, can be decomposed to cycles, in fact, we can take just cycles. For instance, what does it mean uh, for one-dimensional case? For one-dimensional case, it means just that the support of pi uh, uh, should be monotone. Monotonicity means just usual monotonicity. So this uh, so this is monotone sequence. If it's not monotone, it's not cyclically mon monotonic. So the conclusion is, uh, if you take final uh, finite subset of the support of the solution, it will be cyclically monotonic. In particular, for one-dimensional case, it's just just monotonic. In, and in one dimension, you immediately get that it should be concentrated on the graph of monotonic function. Uh, okay, and uh, what to do? What to do in the final, uh, in the uh, n-dimensional case? Uh, uh, it turns out that having this cyclic monotonicity property, you can reconstruct the desired potential phi. So I remember, so you, I recall you that we are looking for for uh, for this phi uh, such that phi is concentrated on the gradient. And um, there is something which is called Rockefeller theorem. No, no, it's, it's, it's still not proven. Uh, no, just, just a minute. No. Uh, what I say is a kind of proof that uh, the support of the solution is cyclical monotonic. That's it. Uh, and then I apply the theorem, which says if uh, if some set is cyclical monotonic. Cyclic monotone, cyclic monotone. No, not necessary. Not necessary. Any set. Any set. No, any set. Any set. Uh, this is equivalent to existence of a convex phi. Of a convex phi such that uh, this gamma belongs to the graph. To the graph of phi. Uh, you just have to take the subdifferential of phi. Just to be precise, we you have to take the subdifferential. <laughs> okay, so this was uh, uh, so you know a book called Krakofeller about convex analysis. No, there's no, it's a kind of uh, classical book on this convex, uh, convex geometry. Uh, by the way, the Rockefeller, I, I think he was not a pure mathematician. He, he did research in something like economical applications. So most of this paper about some like uh, the equilibrium theory and so on. Uh, but this, uh, well, this, this is, in the, he wrote a, a book about convex analysis, uh, which is, so the whole book is about just finite dimensional convex geometry. Uh, a nice whole book. Okay, so mm, I'm not going to prove it, even it's not, not very hard. Uh, uh, what we are really interested in, in the existence of phi. How to construct, uh, having a cyclic monotone set, how to construct phi. Uh, and it turns out that there is just a, a formula. We just define it like a supremum over over a fine function. 
supremum of affine function over all finite subsets of gamma. Densities. If you have densities, 
then the open transportation exists. Uh, okay, this mapping called optimal transportation. Uh, if, it, if it doesn't have density, you, of course you can uh, apply again this Crocodile theorem and you will get some phi, but the, the problem is here that the heroes have the sub gradient. And sub gradient is not always well it, it doesn't. It, it, uh, almost every point it contains uh, uh, just one element, but sometimes it, 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 it's uh, set. And uh, it can happen that if your measure doesn't have density, then the bad point, so some gradient, will have non-zero measure. And then you are not able to construct the, the transportation, the mapping. Because you really need that the subgradient uh, uh, for almost every point contains just one element. For instance, the, the Dirac mass, uh, Dirac map, you cannot trans tra tra transport the Dirac map to something, something continuous. Okay, so so let me let me from now on let me assume that the measures have density, then they have transportation. Uh, it's, uh, actually, uh, to be more precise, uh, the existence for optimal transportation works under a mild, uh, mild assumption, namely, uh, your measure, this measure. Uh, cannot if, if it doesn't give uh, non-zero mass to uh, sets which have half of dimension less than one minus uh, n minus one, uh, then they have a distance local transport. But if it say has, uh, it's even if it's concentrated on say uh, uh, on hyperplane. Then it's already. <laughs> okay, so this is one point, one, one, one point of proving optimal transportation. Uh, cyclic homogeneity, just more, just just uh, more or less by hand. Uh, another way to prove it is to use the theory of Cantor-Lewis duality. Okay, so, so our functional um, uh, our functional is linear, and we're looking for uh, for for maximum for so for minimum on the convex set, and it's uh, a general result of Kantarovich that uh, so this is what is called uh, linear programming. And for any, for every problem, uh, for any linear programming problem, there is a very test which is called uh, dual linear programming problem. Uh, this is another problem on another space, on dual space, somehow, in a sense, <coughs> which, is closely, which, which is closely related to the initial problem. Uh, so I'm not going to, the, to explain uh, the general Kantarovich duality, I just say what, uh, what does it mean in this particular transportation problem. Uh, you consider another functional. Consider another functional, uh, which is defined on functions. Uh, the constraint is the pooling inequality and uh, you are looking for supremum, supremum of it. So the theorem the infinite in the Kantarovich problem 
I, uh, so remember we are looking for uh, for for pi which belongs to this set or even minimum okay minimum equals to uh, the supremum of j so uh, the supremum is taken over over all functions which satisfy this assumption. Well, uh, this problem is not a dual problem. Uh, and, uh, okay, uh, just a few words about it. So, uh, <coughs> so in the in the finite dimensional case, uh, when you're uh, looking for uh, extremums of linear functional on uh, final dimensional uh, subset, uh, the dual problem has a really simple formulation. So it's it's really you can write down the the the, the, the primal problem. And you automatically write down the, the, the dual problem. It's very easy. You just take this some matrices and equalities and you rewrite it in, in a certain way. Uh, so the theorem says that the minimum coincides with the supremum. And uh, uh, what is important for us, this fight is uh, related to the potential for big phi, which we're looking for. On our end, on our end. Phi, uh, phi on our end. And psi on our end. This is just another problem, which apparently doesn't uh, has, has nothing to do with it. But uh, the solution of this phi is related to phi from from uh, it, the solution of this gives our, our transportation potential, which we, existence of which we have proved, uh, well, not, not really proved, uh, by the Rockefeller theory. Uh, they're not the, 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 they're not identical, but they are connected by. by the simple relation. So then by this potential for for optimal transportation. This duality property is actually a, a, a very, a very deep, deep, deep fact. Uh, 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 if you s uh, look at it for the first time, it may s uh, seem somehow kind of artificial and not exactly clear uh, uh, why this problem should be connected. Uh, nevertheless. Uh, Dealing with linear programming is unavoidable not to consider uh, uh, the, 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 dual, the, dual, the dual problem. Uh, and the proof of this uh, of this relation uh, is trivial in one way, meaning that uh, some inequality here is trivial in one side, maybe this. Oh no, no, this one. This is trivial. This is trivial, but this is hard. But this is hard, the opposite inequality. And it's really a uh, deep functional, uh, fun uh, the deeply result of functional analysis. Uh -huh. So if we 
tell me how this, to prove the, the, the opposite inequality, so I'm not going to do it. I just say that eventually the most uh, um, simple way to look on it uh, is reduce it to the minimax theorem. Uh, so you have what is the minimax, minimax theorem? What the minimax theorem is? Minimax theorem. If you have a function of two uh, variables, then the minimum of the maximum uh, is a lot bigger than the maximum of the minimum. This is triviality. But sometimes they, co they, they, they coincide. Sometimes they coincide. For instance, they coincide uh, provided, uh, so we have equality here, provided M is uh, convex in X and concave in Y. And then the point which are uh, and we have inequality in, uh, uh, where we have, uh, have an inequality is a settled point. So the solution somehow, solution, the settled point. So you have, so you, uh, the right function to, 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 to deal with here, uh, like this. This statement can be proved uh, with the help of the abstract minimax, minimax uh, theorem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, it's very important for, for many reasons, but just now what I, I want to stress that the solution to the two problem immediately give to you again the potential. So it's another proof, uh, another, another, another way to prove the potential. Yeah. Sorry? Uh, uniqueness, uniqueness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. Uh, um, well. it's, it's unique up to adding a constant, first of all. But, uh, uh, uniqueness, uh, yes, we have here uniqueness, uh, quite clear, 